just welded up 35 rods with a battery powered welder. This is the first all in one battery powered welding station. Echo, echo, not sure. We're gonna call it the Lion Welder. And it is the Lion Welder. It's the lithium ion, lithium ion battery welder. See what they did there? So they've got the mini version, which is this, which I know it's a beast. And then they've got the bigger uh, light version, which is like a huge, you know, powerhouse. It's about twice as big, just a big power station unit. I'm gonna try to break it down for you from what would you get in the box to how it works. And then we'll obviously be testing it out, of course. Right out of the package, Everything down to the controls, just the fill of it, the handle and all. You can tell this is a well-built machine, not to mention a honking charger. This is the charger for it. I think this is actually bigger than some of the welders that I've even had before. So you get the machine, you get the charger, and then you get some connections. Now, they're just giving you the little dense connections. I, I'm not quite sure. I, I'm assuming you're gonna be adding leads to the box, right? This is an awesome charger and was able to charge the from halfway to full within about an hour and a half. So full charge only takes about three hours. One of the biggest questions is going to be how much can it even weld? And it says it can do 35 3.2 millimeter or eighth inch rods. And that is totally confirmed because I did just that and it even blew it out of the water because it only dropped the battery life down to 50%. That is 3.2 millimeter rods, 35 of them straight with this guy. No issues. Freaking awesome. So this is the mini version and it's got a 2.4 kilowatt hour battery in this sucker charging everything. And it's not just a straight up battery being output to your weld. It's actually got some nice features like your hot start, arc for, arc for, hot start, arc force, and then your amperage controls. You've got the charging port and the on off switch on the back. We're going to kick it on just to show you these couple things. You may notice with it on, there's no fan noise. And even when the fan does kick on, once you weld, it took about maybe about a half of a beat to get the fan kicked on. It was super quiet. My neighbor's blower doing his lawn was actually louder and I could hear that over the fan for this welder. So. Props to them on that. Overheat, that's right, overheat. So up here on the panel, what we've got here is you've got the amperage control. It goes from zero all the way up to 150. Then you've got a hot start. So that will uh, allow you to be able to strike that arc that much easier. And then, like I said, the amperage, it's very simple. That's what the digital display is coordinated with. And then over here, you've got a power LED. You've got an OH, which overheating. Okay, I, I would figured it was a, some type of overload or, or heating type thing. So the other one is actually a LV, a low voltage, I believe. Under voltage, but it's LV. Just like with any battery thing, you actually don't want to drain it 100%. You got to have a little juice in there to charge. So that will kick on when you get too low. You've got your two DC terminals. These are 35 to 50 DINs connections. It's a very common style, which is nice. I was able to find some leads with my other welder. Uh, they fit right in there, no issues. Positive, negative, so you can switch it back and forth between your DCEP or DCEN, just depending on what rods or what you're doing, or you can actually get a manual TIG torch and throw down some TIG welds. I'm not gonna bore you going line by line through the specs. I'm just gonna throw them up here. This is for both the mini and the light version. But I do wanna highlight that duty cycle, which that has to be one of the highest duty cycles I've seen out of a machine this size, you know, without obviously getting into a larger industrial type machine. Let's get this charged up and go test it out some more. We're unplugged, we're off the grid. If you ask me, this is pretty freaking awesome. All of these rods are eighth inch or 3.2 millimeter, and these first ones are some 7018. Now I know people are gonna ask, well, what about 6010? 
Guess what? I couldn't find any 6010 in my stockpile, but I did find some 6011. I know they're not exactly the same, but this is what I've got, so I'm gonna test it out. So these two here on the end, that's the 6011, and then I went back just because I like 7018 a lot better, and finished off these couple rows with that 7018. I had both the Arc Force and the Hot Start dials right up in the middle. I figured I was probably gonna have to adjust them a little bit, but I did not. Right there in the middle, I had no issue striking the arc and just laying down nice, beautiful beads. Just as a variety, I found some 16th 6013 rods and I did these at 55 amps. I bumped it up to a 332nd 6013 rod and this is about 75 amps. It is 90 degrees here in my garage. I'm sweating bullets and the machine is not even hot. I thought for sure I was going to be hitting those duty cycles or at least that overheat mode. Did not. It just kept trucking along with no issues. Three year warranty with this welder. So how much is it going to be and where do you even pick it up? Well, check out the link below. Uh, as of today, they've actually only got some pictures of it on there. I'm assuming by the time you see this video, there's gonna be the whole thing. It's all gonna be updated with the price and everything. I did ask them for the price and they said it's gonna be retailing for 2,900 bucks, somewhere around there. And there will be an early bird special for like $2,000, which is a heck of a deal because really the only other a battery powered welder that I've seen out on the market right now is that ESOB T-Wall combo that they came up with. Now the Lion welder is bigger in size and weight than that ESOB, but you're going to be able to get more amperage out of this and do more rods. And yet even more so at a cheaper cost. So seems like a pretty sweet deal. I've only got two easy fixable complaints about this that if they did change, they could definitely make this a top notch machine. One is the manual. There's quite a few errors in here. And then number two is that they've only included no leads, but just the dense connection. I just heard from ACO and they will be including these leads. They're already checking items off that list. This is a game changer. Being able to weld 100% off the grid, freaking awesome. Pick one up. Get out there, start welding. I'm DIY Pro. We'll see you next time.